Hi everybody, getting back to Atlanta. Just as always, when you do an impromptu presentation in a public place and people and the city is moving about you, it is very easy to become distracted. Uh, I did have my notes, but didn't even think to look at those. So that's why I fumbled a little bit at the end there. Um, uh, bringing back up Bobby Hammond again because I really did want to share some things about him and about Martin Luther King that I left off. You know, yes, we are aware that he was a government agent, but I also want to talk about some of the ways that impacted black people and all people on the planet. And I did make a few notes here about it, so I want to go down as I continue on my drive uh, back to Atlanta. Um, I also had read, I believe somewhere, that even Rosa Parks was a government agent. You know, I used to do a lot of posting on Facebook, and I would post uh, information about the Civil Rights Movement, and, and on that uh, picture that I saw, uh, she was positioned there on the bus, she was all alone, and behind her, and near the back of the bus, was, you know, a white man who very easily could have been an agent if they were crafting this whole thing. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about Cobb Street, where my grandmother lived, uh, and all that she went through being a product uh, of, I uh, believe, a sharecropper or someone, or something odd about that situation that the family really doesn't perhaps know or like to talk about. But she was, like many uh, mixed children at that time were given away to the other side of, of town. But Cobb Street, where the long walk home was filmed with Whoopi Goldberg and Sissy Spacek. Um, you know, when I was watching that, it, it just reminded me so much of my grandmother. I understood my father a whole lot better uh, when he saw the reaction to that movie. You know, he sat up on the edge of his seat. He was so excited about it, you know, and everything. It's like it transported it back in time. And to be thinking that I may be moving back to that area, it's, um, I don't know, it's, 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 it's a strange feeling. But um, as far as Martin, Clint, Martin King and, and, and uh, Rosa Parks, you know, civil rights did not benefit black people other than the fact that we were able to go into white restaurants and, you know, avoid some of those Jim Crow laws. But, you know, Bobby Hammond was even speaking, I think, and I thought back to, you know, knowledge about Auburn Avenue in Atlanta and how it used to be a thriving uh, area for black people, black business. Uh, Martin Luther King Center is there now, but uh, black people... I don't, I don't feel we have come a long way. We don't know the truth of who we are. We haven't learned our own history. And and uh, that whole area, you know, black, there was a black Wall Street, I think. And in Auburn Avenue area, uh, they came in and, and tore that down. And so all of a sudden, they promoted Martin King and integration. And has that really served us going to schools where we're not taught the truth of ourselves or the truth of history? And then um, businesses, you know, we had black banks, insurance companies, and, we, you know, we're, th we're thriving. And now we don't have any of that. But that area over there today, Auburn Avenue, they built a trolley system coming down that street and all around down Peach Street where the Martin Luther King marches and uh, birthday celebrations took place there. Uh, but it's different now. And Bobby Hammond has explained that civil rights did not serve us. It took our businesses away and effectively through affirmative action and all those type of programs... Uh, when we were thriving on our own, we then went to work in white corporations and all our genius and all our expertise and hard work for a $30,000 a year job. You know, on the good end back then, you know, turned, we, it's just like they turned it around and we're slaves again. 
And so, you know, what what was the benefit of all of that? So, you know, as much as I love Martin King and all of that, and I love all black people who, who, who stand up for something and then take action, not just talk about it, uh, in their own personal lives, not always looking for a leader. You know, what do you do day to day, year to year, to serve our people? And I think that is very important. But moving further about Mark King, he started talking about Jesus. Now we all, if you're all subscribing, subscribing to my channel, we, we've been through all of that. The mythology, uh, Jesus uh, being uh, his story in Christianity, stolen from Ethiopian Christianity, and uh, being based off the life of Heru. And so we are now donning the Christ energy, not as individuals, but as a race of black people. This is prophesied, this is what has happened, and that is something that's so exciting to look forward to. But Martin Luther King and all these black pastors out here, you know, how do they sleep at night? I'm certain that some of them know the truth, but they are not empowering people. They're getting paid. They're pimps, you know, and they are getting paid and flying jets and, you know, it's, 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 all, it's all so frustrating. And it starts with that religion and that's Jesus life. And now white people have deified Martin King. You know, you can't even complain about things. Uh, and Bobby Hemmett was also saying that. You know, you complain about anything or try to forward any other scholar and they go, oh, wait, you have, we have Martin Luther King. No, we don't have Martin Luther King. You have Martin Luther King. He's like a messiah. You go over there and tour that street and you uh, see more white people going in and out of those buildings than you do even black people. And the black people that do go don't know the truth. So... You know, I am so excited about the Divine Mother coming back in. You know, my dissertation is all about that. Uh, uh, I, wanna, I want you all to really uh, buy my book. You know, read my book. Chapter 7 is about Kundalini. It is based on my uh, dissertation in metaphysical science. Uh, from HIV to Kundalini, awakening the Divine Feminine within. And the Divine Mother is raging back in. You know, and I like that Cali aspect of her. I like that slay left and right and, and, and make real change. And I am happy to be a part of that. I'm happy that my dissertation is largely about that and my book about the return of the divine feminine. Writing out uh, the patriarchy. We already know the lower demiurge entities are losing power. So we need to start speaking that and it helps them lose power. And so... They have done all kinds of things, walk-ins. Uh, Bobby Hammond has said that 99% of black people uh, are, are, are influenced by Lord Demiurge entities, archons, and walk-ins. And that along with the cloning and all we know about black eradication, you know, it's almost becoming <laughs> overwhelming. It's becoming overwhelming to learn all of the deception and uh, all of the murder you know, in my several attempts too. So it's not like I'm not personally involved in everything that I'm about. And again, uh, Impromptu Neptune Hat Musical has been an outlet for me to get out some of those thoughts and feelings as well as the park talks. So thank you all if you are tuning in and checking me out from time to time. I'm hoping that it'll be a long time before I do another one. But you just never know. You know, I have to fill up these days with something. And uh, to energize my own spirit and hopefully to help others in the process. Okay? Uh, have a wonderful uh, weekend coming up here. Uh, tomorrow being Friday. And uh, we'll hope for this twinkling of an eye. And uh, I pray for all of our safety. All right? I am Dr. David Q. Lester. Could be Armin Ra Ampur, Sarset Arakti, Metaphysical Science, The Conscious Dr. Rainbow Warrior. Ah, uh, too. Rock.